Hi, I'm Olivia Dean and welcome to another week of Learning at Home TV. It's our regular educational program that is broadcast every Monday, Wednesday and Friday to help make learning stress-free for primary school students. As always, we've divided lessons into three age brackets. Early years, middle primary and upper primary. And those lessons are conducted by some wonderful teachers from across Queensland schools. We will cover English, maths, science and important health and wellbeing messages. On today's show, we have some tips that will help kids to stay fit at home. There's a chance to learn about letters in English, fun subitizing in maths, and we're going to explore different types of pushes and pulls in science. So good morning to all, thinking caps on please, and let's get ready to learn. Before we start our lessons, kids, let's make some time to get active and energetic. Exercise makes your bones nice and strong, and it keeps you happy and makes you sleep better at night. Children and young people should aim to get at least 60 minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity every day. Anything that makes you huff and puff counts. It doesn't have to all be at once, though. Smaller bursts of activity during the day count towards that 60-minute daily target. So, let's get to it. Hi, I'm Jackie Orson from the Gold Coast Suns and I'm inside like all of you so keeping active and healthy is really important to me. I'm going to teach you some cricket moves. So first thing to do is learning to transfer our weight when we're going to throw the ball. So it's literally leaning forward and transferring our weight. Keep going on both feet so that you learn how to do it with both arms eventually. So once we've learned that, we're going to learn to throw the ball at the wickets. So we're going to step forward, transfer our weight and throw the ball down to the wickets. And we're going to do that with both hands. Keep your arm out wide and point forward like this. Keep going. And now we're going to learn how to do the long one as if we're throwing it from the outfield. So we're going to lean back, transfer our weight and throw it as far as you can. And we're going to do that a few times. Do it on both arms so that we can learn how to do both. I hope you enjoyed this and good luck when you learn to do it. Well done throwing your imaginary ball, but now it's lesson time. So I hope you're all ready to sit comfortably and listen to our first teacher. Did you know that letters are everywhere? I see them on signs as I walk down the street, on my keyboard, on my computer, and in all the words that I read. I know that my name is even made up of letters. Today, Sarah is going to have fun learning about letters and sounds with you. Enjoy. Hello, everyone. My name is Sarah. Today, we are looking at letters and sounds. Before we start, let's remember what we already know about letters. I know there are 26 letters of the alphabet. Each letter can be shown with an uppercase letter, which can also be called a capital letter, or a lowercase letter. There is a song about the letters of the alphabet. Would you like to hear it? If you know it, please join in with me. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y and Z. Now I know my ABC. Next time, won't you sing with me? <laughs> that was fun. We just sang all 26 letters of the alphabet. My name Sarah has letters. I can count how many letters there are in my name. Would you like to help me? Let's start. One, two, three, four, Five. My name has five letters. The beginning letter of my name is a capital S. It is also known as an uppercase letter. Capital letters are used for names of people and special places. A sentence starts with a capital letter too. My name also has lowercase letters. These letters are not beginning a sentence and do not start my name, so they are not written as capitals. The lowercase letters in my name are A, 
R A H. My name Sarah is a word. A word is a group of letters. The letters in words tell us the sounds that we say. I know Sarah starts with the letter S. The letter S makes the S sound. I can hear with my little ear that Sarah starts with the S sound. Did you know that a letter or group of letters represent a sound? Special delivery! Letter of the day! I think that that's the letter of the day. Did you hear that? I'm so excited. Let's have a look. Time to check the letter box. Oh, letter of the day, what sound do you say? It's time to play letter of the day. Oh, I do love letter of the day. Oh, letter of the day, what could you be? Oh, letter of the day, what can I see? I can see the letter U. I can see the uppercase letter U and the lowercase letter U. Let's take a look at how we can write the letter U. Lowercase U. Start at the star. Down, quick turn up. Top to bottom, stop. Start at the star. Down, quick turn up. Top to bottom, stop. Uppercase U. Start at the star. Down, quick turn up. Top to bottom, stop. Start at the star. Down, quick turn up. Top to bottom, stop. Oh, letter of the day, what do you say? I know that letters represent sounds that we say. I also know that letters can make more than one sound. The letter U can have a short sound, uh, as in cut. I know it is short because the sound is quick, uh. Special delivery, sound of the day, the short U sound. Mmm, <gasps> here's another delivery. I wonder what's in this box. Oh, it sounds like some objects. I wonder if these objects will start with the short uh sound. There are three objects in this box. There is an umbrella, a teddy bear, and a photo of an uncle. Hmm, one of these words does not start with the uh sound. I wonder which one it could be. Umbrella. Uh, umbrella. It starts with the uh sound. Hmm. Teddy bear. Hmm. Teddy bear starts with the t sound. I cannot hear the uh sound at the beginning of this word. No, teddy bear does not start with the uh sound. Uncle. Uncle. Yes. Uncle starts with the uh sound. The two words umbrella and uncle start with the uh sound. I know the word teddy bear does not start with the same sound. Teddy bear does not start with the letter U. The two words uncle and umbrella start with the uh sound. These words start with the letter U. Now we are going to look at words that have an uh sound in the middle. Here is a mug. Say the word with me. M -a -g. Can you hear the uh sound in the middle of this word? Mug. The uh sound is in the middle of the word. Now we are going to listen to a story that has lots of words with the uh sound in them. But this activity is very tricky. The uh sound is not at the beginning of the words. Jan had a puppet called Jim. Jim could juggle. Jim could jiggle. Jim could play the trumpet and the drums. What a puppet I am, 
said Jim. Jan gave Jim a cuddle. You're the only puppet for me, she said. Look, said Jan, there's Jill. Let's show Jill how you can juggle and jiggle. And Jan and Jim jogged over to Jill. Hi, Jill, said Jan. Look at what my puppet can do. But Jim just sat slumped on Jan's lap. He didn't juggle or jiggle or play the trumpet or the drums. What's the matter, Jim? spluttered Jan. Show Jill how you can jiggle and juggle. But Jim just sat and looked glum. Jill started to giggle and ran off to eat her plums. Why didn't you juggle? said Jan to Jim. Why didn't you jiggle? Why didn't you play the trumpet or the drums? I got in a muddle, muttered Jim. I got in a muddle and I forgot how to juggle or jiggle or play the trumpet or the drums. It doesn't matter a jot, said Jan to Jim. As long as you can still cuddle, you're the only puppet for me. Did you hear any words in the story Jan's puppet with the uh sound in the middle? You did? Well done. I bet the words you thought of were puppet, juggle, drum, trumpet, spluttered, muddle, muttered and cuddle, just like me. Can you see the letter U making the uh sound in these words? Wowie, that was fun. The letter of the day was the letter U. We learnt about the short uh sound that the letter U can make in words. Hello again everyone, we're so glad you could join us for Learning at Home TV. I really enjoyed singing the alphabet song earlier and today in maths we will be thinking about counting. We will hear about when we need to count and when we know how many without needing to count. Hi everyone, my name is Monique. Today Kristen and I are going to be learning about counting with you. Hi Kristen. Hi Monique. We are both really happy you could be here with us today. Kristen, did you know that sometimes when you want to know how many there are, you don't even need to count? Yes, Monique. I know that is called subitizing. Subitizing is when you can see how many objects without needing to count them. It is such a great skill to have. Is that what we're learning about today? It sure is. But before we learn more about subitizing, we are going to remind ourselves of the important things to remember when we count. Let's look at this handful of teddy bears. Kristen, I want to know how many teddy bears I have collected. Can you tell us how we can count this collection? Sure, Monique. Let's put them here so we can count them. We can count them one by one like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The last number I counted was eight, so there are eight teddy bears. We make sure to only count each teddy bear once. I'm going to arrange the teddy bears in a different way to count them this time. We can also count the teddy bears using skip counting in twos like this. Two, four, six, eight. The last number I said was eight. So there are eight teddy bears. 
I moved the teddy bears in groups of two as I was skip counting in twos. So Monique, there are two ways we could count the teddy bears. Thanks Kristen. You reminded us about some important things to remember when we count. When we count, the last number counted tells us how many. We only count each object once and no matter how the objects are arranged, the count will be the same. Thanks, Kristen. Now, let's talk about subitizing. As Kristen said, when we subitize, we can see how many without needing to count. Have a look at this dice. I made this just out of some cardboard. On each side of the dice are dots instead of numerals. These dots represent the numerals one through to six. Kristen, let's have a go of using this dice together. I'm going to roll the dice and then you say how many you see, okay? Okay. Radio, first roll. Three. I can see straight away that there are three dots without needing to count. Great job. Get ready. Second roll. Five. I can see straight away that there are five dots without needing to count. Well done. Get ready. Third roll. Three. I can see straight away that there are three dots without needing to count. Great job, Kristen. You can see straight away how many dots there are without needing to count the dots. You were subitizing. Now, Monique, there are ways you can subitize when you want to know how many in a larger collection. We can subitize larger collections by grouping them into smaller groups where we do know how many just by looking. Would you like to see? Yep, I sure would. We are going to use these gold counters. I have a handful here. We are going to find out how many using subitizing and counting. So I'll gently place the counters here. I can see straight away a group of three and some more. So I have subitized three and then I will count the rest. Three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven gold counters. Oh wow, Kristen, that's great. Can I have a turn? Absolutely. How about you use these coloured buttons? OK, I've got a handful of buttons here. I'm going to gently drop them on the table so we can see how many. Oh, I can see straight away that there's a group of five and then some more. I'm going to move this group of five over here that I've already sabotaged and then count the rest. Five, six, seven, eight. Eight. There are eight buttons all together. Hey Monique, let's try another activity that helps us to practice subitizing. In this activity, I will hide some blocks under this cloth and then when I lift it up, you need to say how many blocks you saw before I put the cloth back down. Sounds great, let's start. Okay, you turn away while I put some blocks under and cover them with this cloth. Okay, I'm ready. I'll count down from three, three, two, one. Four. I see four blocks. Great job, Monique. Yes, there are four. Wow, we have learned so many things about subitizing today, Kristen. We have learned that subitizing is when you know how many without needing to count. We often use subitizing for smaller collections. We have also learnt that both subitizing and counting can be done when we want to know how many there are in larger collections and we played some games to practice both. Kristen and I are going to keep playing some subitizing games. You might like to play some games or practice subitizing and counting with collections of objects. Bye Kristen. Bye Monique. Bye, everyone. Wow, guys, how cool is subitizing? Monique and Kristen reminded us about some important things to think about when we count. 
I loved the activity hiding the blocks under the cloth. That was fun. But now it's time for our My Place segment, which celebrates students from across the state of Queensland. And welcome. My name is Emily Robinson and I'm a proud young Aboriginal woman from the Awapikal Nation. I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians on the land on which we walk, live and learn, for they gave care to these lands for thousands of years. I would also like to pay my respects to the elders both past, present and future. I know that things are different right now, but we all need to make sure that we are taking the right precautions in order to stop the spread of germs. By washing our hands like I am every few hours, we will reduce the spread of germs. After this pandemic, I can't wait to get back into netball. Welcome back guys. Have you ever noticed that sometimes you have to push or pull something with all your strength, like a game of tug of war? And other times you need to be very gentle, like this game of blocks, so the stack doesn't tumble? Today in science, we're going to explore different types of pushes and pulls. Hi. Think about times that you've had to push or pull really hard. When do you need to be really strong? You might need to use a lot of strength when you're pulling yourself up on the monkey bars or carrying a heavy bag of groceries. Think about a time when you push or pull just a little bit. When do you need to be really gentle? You might um, be gentle when you're using a paintbrush to do fine detail or you might need to gently push to thread a needle with some thread when you're sewing. Today, we're going to investigate what happens when you change the strength of a push or a pull. I've got a tow truck and a tip truck. It's not really a tow truck, but that's what we've got. How hard do you think it's going to have to pull to get this tip truck up the hill? It's going to use a rubber band to pull it with. Let's take a closer look at a rubber band. So if I just pull it a little bit, it stretches a little. But if I pull harder, it stretches a lot. So that will help us see how hard the tow truck is pulling. So can you see the rubber band stretch a bit as the truck comes up the hill? I'm going to use blocks to measure how much it stretches to. Okay, so, oh, I might have guessed about right, I think. So, with the truck empty, it needs that many blocks to show the length of the rubber band. Now I'll put a few toys in, load it up a little bit. Will that make any difference? Let's check. It's now using about that many blocks. Okay, a little bit more. I'm going to have one more go. Get rid of those. This time I'm going to put this heavy piece of brick in. What do you think will happen? It's stretching out. I think I'm going to need more blocks. broken. <laughs> and I think two more. Okay, now that's how many blocks we need to show how hard it's pulling. So the tip truck must have been pulling harder when we had a heavier load. Okay, now another way to look at how we could um, change how hard we push or pull. 
I've got a ruler here, and I've got my eraser. You've probably done this before. If I push down on one end of the ruler, I can flip the eraser a little bit. And if I push down harder or softer, a soft push, let's try a harder one. Here's something you can try. It's a bit of a challenge to try at home later. Can you push down on the ruler so the eraser flips up to exactly a height you want? It'll take a bit of skill. First, I'm going to see if I can get my eraser to go just to the height of this chicken's beak. I think that was a bit high. Try again. No, much too high. Not very good. Had to take some practice. Now though, I'm going to have another go at getting it to exactly the height of the chicken's beak when it's higher. How should I change the way I push? That was close. I had to push a lot harder. I'll let one more go. Have a go at home. Have some practice. Let's now look at, back on what we've learnt today. We now know that we can make things move differently by using different strength pushes and pulls. Another thing we now know is that we can decide how hard or softly to push or pull things. What are some other ways you could practice different pushes and pulls at home? Maybe you've got something like this old game of quoits. If you throw just the right strength, you could land it on the target too hard or too soft, and you miss. What about tossing an object so that it just hits something that you've put on the ground as a target, not too far or too short. Or bouncing a ball. What if you see if you can bounce it just to the height of your nose? That was too high. Mm, that was close. Have some practice. Try some other games where you change how hard or uh, softly you push. Have fun and I'll see you next time. All right, everyone, now I have a story for you that's called Birdie and the Virus. The book is the latest edition in the Australian first Birdie's Tree series of illustrated storybooks created by Children's Health Queensland. A virus has made Birdie's friends sick. Birdie feels lonely and worried. Check out how Birdie's friends feel better. This is Birdie. Birdie is a happy bird who likes to sing. She lives in a nest in a tall tree near a forest. Birdie feels cosy and safe in her nest. Birdie likes to catch worms and talk with her friend Mr Frog. Mr Frog lives in a pond with green lily pads. One day, Mr Frog felt yucky. His nose was runny, he had a cough, his head felt hot. I think I'm sick, croaked Mr Frog. Mr Frog had to lie down. Lots of their friends were sick too and had to stay at home in bed. Birdie felt sad and lonely because her friends couldn't play games with her. She also felt worried. What if Mr Frog didn't get better? What if everyone stayed sick forever? Dr Grace came along. She said, Birdie, I know you feel sad and worried, but we will help Mr Frog and everyone else feel better. Dr Grace gave Mr Frog a mask to wear. Everyone had to wash their hands. Birdie, said Dr Grace, the thing making everyone sick is called a virus. We need to check for the virus inside your nose to see if you might get sick too. The little stick felt strange inside Birdie's nose, but it wasn't there long. It was hard for Birdie and Mr Frog having to stay home. 
They couldn't go out and do the things they usually did, but they found ways to have fun together. Birdie didn't get sick, and soon Mr Frog felt better, and so did everyone else. Birdie was so happy to go out and explore and play with her friends again. There are so many ways to keep fit and healthy at home. I like going for a walk with my dog, Romy, every day. Getting outside and taking in the fresh air is really good for my brain. Speaking of brain, it's now time for a brain break. Stand up, let's get ready to move our bodies. Then Luke will be joining the middle primary kids for some more learning. Hi, I'm Ryan Lester from the Brisbane Lions. And just like you, I'm stuck at home at the moment. It's important we stay active during this time. So let's get active now. The exercises I'm going to show you today are AFL based. The first one, spread your legs wide and we're going to do trunk rotations. With your left hand, touch your right foot. With your right hand, touch your left foot. Give that a go a few times. The second exercise we're going to do is calf raises. Start with the planted foot and raise up to your toes. Do that five or six times each leg. The last exercise we're going to do is a kicking technique. Start with a planted foot, swing your leg through and finish on your toe. Just like kicking an AFL ball. Just like this. Thanks very much for tuning in. Remember to stay active and go Lions!